。每年喺美國舉辦嘅 Cedia 智能家居與視聽電子展覽會咧，係世界規模最大、最專業嘅智能家居及視聽系統展會之一嚟嘅。而未來家居影音科技有啲咩最新發展呢？我哋就好開心可以邀請到 Cedia 技術委員會主席 Peter 同我哋分享一下。未來有冇啲咩五大科技我哋可以同大家分享一下嘅咧？ Number one is going to be a really important one, and we call that the age of abundance. Let's go back a few years to the original iPod, but it had five gigabytes of storage. Now a CD is 650 or 700 megabytes. Yeah. So how many of those could you have fitted uncompressed? About 10. Now do you remember Apple's slogan at the time? Thousands of songs in your pocket. That sounds really impressive. And the MP3 was a way of compressing that music down,、mm. so you can fit a lot more into the storage. As you compress it, you reduce quality. Now we're in the age of abundance. It's just not mattering that much anymore. And there's going to be some really, really important things happening over the next few years that show that.、Um, internet bandwidths are getting more and more and more, so we can stream even more and more powerful files. The really profound thing that's going to be making so much difference over the next few years is processing power. Processing power is getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. Also, getting miniaturized to be smaller and smaller and smaller. Getting back to AV specific, one of the things that processing power is giving us is is DSP, digital signal processing. And that's probably the most profound thing in terms of increasing sound quality. I have a, a, a system at home, and my preamplifier is a very, very, very powerful DSP processor. And I was at the Munich High End Show this year, and I was walking into these rooms that were, you know, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of hi-fi system. And I sat down, and all I could hear was room modes. All I could hear was really boomy bass.、Mm -hmm. All I could hear was、um, a tonality that I didn't particularly like. With DSP, all of that goes away. So we're we're going to have the the ability to、um, implement some very 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 powerful audio processing for the systems, and that's just going to get less and less and less expensive、mm -hmm. and built it you know be built into everyday consumer electronics items. On my on my phone, I can have an audio player, and I can play around with EQ. I can play around with DSP. That just wouldn't have been possible three or four years ago, because the the processor in here just wouldn't have been fast enough. But now we're in the age of abundance.、Um, processing really cheap, storage really cheap, internet transmission speeds much much faster and really cheap, and that's just gonna. You know, make so many things that we want to do much easier. Number two is an extension on the age of abundance. It's what we call ubiquitous sensorization. So ubiquitous, it's just going to be everywhere. Sensorization, we're going to have a lot more sensors in our life.、Um, and when we think of sensors, there's there's the really obvious thing like a motion sensor in a room. But then we're also surrounded by other sensors. A CCTV camera is is a sensor.、Yeah. An Amazon Alexa or a Google Home、um, microphone that's a sensor. If any of you are wearing fitness bands or smart watches, you know, with with biometrics, that that that's a sensor. Audio analytics is going to be an an incredible field. There's there's companies now developing audio analytics where if you have lots of microphones in a room. Those are constantly listening and listening to to certain sounds. So I'll, I'll give you a really really exciting example, and that is if if you have an elderly relative that's、um, living at home, audio analytics can、um, tell if someone's had a fall. So they they know the sound of someone falling falling down, and that could then、um, cause an alert to go out to you, and you can go around and see if they're okay. They know the sound of something breaking, so in terms of a security system,、mm -hmm. it can tell the difference between a glass breaking from the outside, which is an intruder, or someone dropping a glass at a party, which it wouldn't worry about. The sensor can recognize. Yeah. Well, the sen the sensor is a simple microphone,、oh. but the, there's some really really clever <laughs> clever processing just just constantly analyzing that sound. What that's going to drive. Is that、um, with all of this data 
coming in from, from the home. The home kind of measuring, measuring our lives, almost digitizing mm -hmm. everything that's going on. Um, there's going to be systems that are going to be available that will use all that data and, and take decisions to help you. Mm -hmm. So at the moment, you might have to say, you know, Alexa on an Amazon, Alexa, what's the traffic like for my, for my drive to work? Whereas, you know, in the future, the house will just know that you're, you're getting ready <laughs> because it knows what you're doing and it will say, you know, hey, you, you need to hurry up because the, because the traffic's getting really bad and you, you need to leave, leave a little bit earlier. So all, all of these sensors, all, all of this extra data, and we've, we've kind of coined a phrase for it. I'm not sure how easily it's going to translate, but this is ambient subliminal input capture. So ambient, it's happening all around us. Subliminal, we, we don't really know it's happening. We're not, we're not really aware of it. An input capture is just capturing lots and lots of data. And at the moment, we, we think of a smart home and home automation. Mm -hmm. We're now moving into the era of proactive assistance. So rather than um, the house reacting to our actions, the house is going to be proactively thinking about what's that person going to do next? How can I help them? How can I make their life easier? How can I make their life more, more secure? How can I make their life happier? How can I make their life healthier? Think of um, maybe a, a, a camera in a room that can read your body temperature. So that could then be linked to the air conditioning system. And you know, it could look at you. Oh, you know, he's a he's a bit hot. I'm mm. I'm gonna I'm gonna re reduce the temperature in that room by one degree. So again, we we need the sensors around us to give us that data. Camera could be high enough resolution to sort of measure you as a being, mm. but not so high resolution that it can necessarily recognize your face. I, I think 2018 yeah. is gonna be the, the year of sensorization, the year that we're gonna start having a lot more sensors in the home. And um, the next trend I'm gonna talk about is another thing that's gonna help bring all these sensors together. Um, let's talk about displays. So what kind of displays, you know, there's 4K, there's HDR, which we talked about in the, in the home yep. theater side. Um, but what kind of new displays are coming? How are we going to experience the dis these displays? Sure. You know, um, is 8K, you know, really that important? So when, when we look at different display formats, you've, you've already got manufacturers able to make a display like a roll of wallpaper. So rather than you buying this rigid display, you will buy a display on a roll that you will just roll out and stick to a wall. We're watching them in a very far field way. So I'm sitting in my sofa and my display is maybe three or four meters away from me. That's, that's watching a display far field. And you asked about 8K, James. In that scenario, I, I don't think we need 8K because we're simply not sitting close enough to the display mm. to see those extra pixels. So all we're doing is we're just increasing the amount of data, which is gonna make our lives much, much, much harder because 8K is gonna have four times the resolution of 4K. Mm -hmm. So at the current level of compression, that's gonna be four times the amount of data. Yeah. And you know, that, that's gonna be really, really heavy and mm. they're, They've already intimated what the HDMI 2.1 standard is going to be, 48 gigabits per second. At the moment, we're struggling with 10. So 48, that, that's going to be a big deal. So 8, 8K is going, to, is going to have some challenges. For far field displays, I'm not sure it's useful. But when we think of an entire wall becoming a display using display wallpaper, mm. You could walk into a room and go, um, I want to be in Paris. <laughs> and the wall will change to a vista of Paris. And you're probably going to want to walk up to the wall as if you're walking up to a window and be standing maybe 30 centimetres away from that and not see any pixels. Mm. And for that, 8K is going to be fantastically useful. So when we talk about near field displays, you know how Samsung and Apple 
they have a constant battle about how many pixels per inch mm. can fit on a phone. That's good because you're watching this near field, the pixels are very close to you. And that's going to be the same with, with new display formats. They can already make these things, but the problem is that the failure rate at the factory is so high that it's just not economic to make them yet. But that will get better and better and better. The other thing I mentioned is something called a computational display. And a computational display is a combination of, you know, computer power, optics, and display technology. And I'll, I'll give you an example. Three of us are sitting here. If there was a display on the wall, we'd all be watching the same thing. Now, you've both got glasses on. I'm wearing contact lenses. If I took my contact lenses and you, you took your glasses off, it would probably be quite blurry. What a computational display can do is the three of us can be sitting here and we could be watching completely different things. Mm -hmm. And the way the display works, it will also be able to correct for all of our visions. So we could take our glasses off and see a sharp picture. Now, if you take this way into the future, you know, what I'm talking about now is probably 12 to 15 years out, but it will happen. Display wallpaper combined with computational display technology, I could be seeing a picture of Paris, you could be seeing a picture of San Francisco, you could be seeing a picture of Melbourne, Australia, all corrected for our, for our vision. So, you know, you ain't seen nothing yet when it, when it comes to displays. The, the second we have display wallpaper, the size of a display is almost going to get limitless. And the vision is that you, you unroll it, you cut a very sharp edge off it, you put an edge connector onto it, the display takes a few minutes to calibrate itself and figure out what's happening, and then all of a sudden you have a TV the size of your whole wall. Um, and you know, 8K, it's, it's almost going to be irrelevant. The thing that we're going to be looking for is pixels per inch. So just as with this display, it's important to have lots of resolution. When we're that close to wallpaper, we've got to have that resolution. And in next year, I, th I think we're going to see the first bendable displays mm. being commercially available. So you, you're going to have displays that are flexible enough that let's say you, you have a round column, mm. you'll be able to wrap that display around that column. That's going to happen in 2018. And then over the years, they're going to get more and more flexible and they're going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, and one of the biggest things about environment is, is lighting. And, you know, for me, I think, I think lighting is the, the big unexplored frontier. Mm. Um, so what are, your thoughts on, uh, what are your thoughts on the future of lighting? The future of lighting is going to be fantastic. At, at the moment, most people are simply concerned with how much light there is. So that their, their choice of light is how bright there it, it is. In the audio world, that would be saying the only thing that matters is it going really loud. Mm. You're not bothered about the quality when, of course, we are bothered about mm. the quality. So with light, the, ne the next frontier is, is talking about the quality of the light. And, you know, there's, there's a number of really interesting aspects to that. We're now using a lot of LEDs because they're, they're very, very energy efficient. And one of the characteristics of an LED is its CRI, its color rendering index. Mm. And that's the ability of the light from an LED to render colors accurately. Um, we, with incandescent light or, or with sunlight, that contains all of the different light spectrum. So colors are very, very natural. With LEDs, the way an LED produces light means that its, its spectrum is, is quite spiky. It produces lots of very tight individual colours. And that means that often, when it's illuminating something, that, that thing doesn't look that, that natural. So over the next few years, we, we're going to see LED manufacturers um, just get better and better and better at producing good colour rendering from, from bulbs. But the really exciting thing that's going to happen with lighting is we're going to have bio-adaptive lighting. As, as humans, 
we've really only been inside for a very small part of our, our evolution. Three or four hundred years ago, we were living our lives mostly outside. We got up when the sun came up, we went to bed when the sun came down, and in the middle we, you know, provided, provided for our families and grew things and, and, and hunted. So our, our um, rhythms are very in tune with the rising and the setting of, of the sun. Now all of a sudden we're indoors and we have fixed lights of a, of a fixed colour. So bioadaptive lighting is um, trying to emulate what happens outside, inside. We already see it on, on phones now. There's a setting that you can have for nighttime. Mm. And what does that setting do? Mm. It, it makes the display a bit redder, doesn't it? It takes, a, it takes away blue. Mm. Because blue light between 500 and, sorry, 475 nanometers and 525 nanometers wavelength, that blue light suppresses our body's production of a hormone called melatonin. And melatonin is what makes us sleepy. As our body produces melatonin, we, we get sleepy and want to go to bed. But if we're watching blue light, that production is getting suppressed. And that's why sometimes if we've been watching loads of TVs and we've been looking at our phone and we go to bed, we find it difficult to sleep mm. because our body hasn't produced that, that melatonin. And similarly, if um, our lights inside don't produce a lot of that wavelength, if in the middle of the day we're just feeling, you know, a, a little bit sleepy, it could be because the lights are just bad. I'm sure we've all sat in, in training courses where um, there have been no windows in the training room, it's just artificial light, and an hour through the lecture, <laughs> sort of, you know, pe people are falling asleep. It's got nothing to do with how interesting the lecture is. You know, it's partly to do with just bad lighting. It's interrupting our circadian rhythms. Our bodies think it's, it's time to go to bed. Mm. So lighting is, is, is going to become a lot more bioadaptive. We're going to have a lot more tunable white lights. So rather than a light just being a fixed white, mm. you know at the moment you can buy an LED as a warm white or a neutral white or a cool white. We're going we're gonna to have lights that you can adjust from warm all the way to cool to better replicate what's going on outside. When the sun rises, it's sort of quite a cool bluey color. Then, you know, when in midday, it's, it's sort of quite bright, but as the sun sets, it becomes yellow and then redder and redder and redder and redder. And by replicating that with our inside lights, we, we can engineer our moods. And we talked earlier about sensorization that the building can sense if you're a bit sleepy mm. and therefore give you more blue light to suppress that melatonin. That the house knows, you know, the family is getting ready to go to bed. So the lights in the house can change to get rid of that blue, to be much redder, to, you know, get our bodies naturally to go to, um, to, go to bed. So, you know, this is, this is really profound. This is, this is using technology not, not to entertain us, but to actually make us healthier and to help change our moods. And I, I think that's really exciting. Thank you for your My pleasure. time. Guys, I'm James. I'm very happy to be here today. Peter will bring us to share with you. I hope that in 2018, we can have a chance to 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 have a